getting ready for class, and it was an in-class section that is now online. Most of my students wanted an in-class section and did not want an online class. In fact, several of them had failed this particular class uh, when they took it online. So what I'm going to do is first make a discussion for the day, and this is about 10, 15 minutes before the class uh, actually starts. And whatever the objective is, I put in there and then I have a comment and make it. Uh, if there's something particular I want them to do. And then I make sure I click allow threaded replies and allow liking. And if you sort by likes, it allows you to grade the participation and see how much they're doing. I'm just starting it actually at the uh, end of the class, the actual end of the class time. And I'm leaving it available until what we now anticipate will be the end of the semester and I save and publish it. And then the next thing is to make an assignment. And I'm going to make a new assignment. And this assignment is going to be uh, today's warm-up. I don't know if you guys use warm-ups or not, but I do. And then post below. And the warm-up's only five points. This just gives me an opportunity to take attendance without having to have Zoom come back and show me who was in. I'm going to make it a new group, and of course the group names can be warm-ups. I'm going to add that group, and I'm not going to count it towards the final grade, because it's just a warm-up. And the submission is going to be through a file upload. You definitely should restrict your upload file types. Uh, there are a lot of them out there. I prefer JPEG and PDF, but right now I'm just letting the students do whatever they have on their phone and then dealing with that afterwards. Uh, if, you're, if I was teaching English right now, I'd definitely use a plagiarism and I'm not going to show a uh, report. It's not a group assignment. It's not going to be peer reviewed. It's going to be assigned to everybody and it's going to be due the day in the class, and I'm going to actually do it in the class, and it's going to be due when my warm-ups would normally be over 35. And the availability of the warm-up, I really don't uh, have a preference on that, but I'm just going to allow it to be any time from 5.35 and 10 more minutes in case something happens. There's no links, I'm just saving and publishing it. Let's say I was having a test. I would go back into assignments and I'd add an assignment. And this would be test four. And submit below. This, my tests are 80 points and the group is going to be in tests and it does count it's going to be online and again it's going to be a file upload i found that the handwritten tests being uploaded by the students using their phones taking pictures is pretty easy now the important part of this is the due part and it has to be due with the end of the class i, I do my tests at the end of the class in. And the nice thing is with Canvas, it, it just tells you when they turn it in late. Now I have a warm up and a test for for today, and, and this will show up in their uh, grades. So I go to Confer Zoom.
and you can see that I have my classes all set up. They're repeating weekly for the rest of the semester. It's an on on campus event, but that's because that's what it was. Now of course it's not. And you can see the next one up Thursday and, I, and my next book is already there as well. So notice that when I click on this, you should always do this, but mine works already, so I'm just joining with computer audio. I do. Let's use a whiteboard. And the first thing I'm going to do is, and I found that it's important to use it as if it was a whiteboard and write, write large. So I have always my date and my objectives, and I have them, when they enter, this is what they're going to see, date and objectives. So you can see that we're doing what probably is on the syllabus. And then once I, I see that I have all my participants in the class, I then replace the date and objectives, which with a warm-up sheet and with the warm-ups I have them and I really uh, for me it's very important I just use one page for the warm-ups I, I write out whatever the warm-up is And then, when I, ha I have all five warm-ups now, obviously, or perhaps not obviously, I would have already had the five warm-ups written before the class started. Once the warm-ups are on, I have them copy them onto another page, their own page at their class. And then I do a breakout to that. Breakout rooms, I'm going to do three. I'm going to do it manually. And I'm going to create the rooms. And notice how I can assign. Okay. I haven't started them. I can add a room, recreate, and options. I don't want to, I want them to return to the main session at any time. No. Breakout rooms close automatically after 30 minutes, and no, I'm not going to use that either. And I'll show you why. And countdown after closing breakdown room. Um, no, I, I'm not using any of these. I'm going to do a manual all the way through. But you are welcome, and you should explore on your own. Because the participants, I can assign them to a breakout room and what I do is I take my A students if you will that seem to help other students and I put them all that way in different break breakout rooms with myself keeping students that I think would do better just with me and then at the end of the breakout time, I bring them back in. So the warm-ups last about 10 minutes, and I have them all back in with no breakouts, and I say, okay, now please submit your warm-ups. While they are doing that, using the assignment in Canvas page, which they have on their phone along with the Zoom app. I ask for questions from last day or previous homework or perhaps difficulties or anything in particular they would like to have covered and we do that as people are submitting the warm-ups. The nice part of this is I can do a dual screen and watch them submit 
in canvas, their warm-ups. Once they're all submitted, which usually I've only done this twice now, uh, usually takes about three or four minutes, and I anticipate that will be quite a bit faster as it goes. Then the next thing is to go back to my date and objectives, and then I'm going to lecture. If my classes are small enough, I allow open mic. I can, of course, mute, mute everybody to manage and unmute and also chat individually or they can chat individually between themselves. And if a difficulty comes up, During the lecture, I can just stop the lecture, obviously, because it's like we are in an actual classroom. At the end of the lecture, I always do, and I'm sure you do too, an example, another example, and then an example that they do. And then we look at the homework. We look at the actual homework, and for that, I usually have one of the students just go to the homework page and share their book with the class, and then together we discuss and do the homework on their notes with me moderating it. Now, one of the things I found right away is that most of the students do not have PCs at home. Some of them have laptops, but they all have cell phones. And so with a selfie stick mounted to uh, some sort of a clamp, they're able to put their cell phone on their book, and it works pretty good. It picks up their audio, it shows the book, and I can switch rapidly between myself whatever I'm doing or what one of the students is doing allowing them to share. When this process is over, we just end the meeting, uh, usually having a, a quick uh, talk together about other issues, just as if we were in a classroom. One of the nice things about Zoom is that you can obviously start it before the meeting time and go past the meeting time even though you stated a meeting time when you first set it up as the past times. I hope this helps. Be safe.